Let's open our Bibles this morning to Exodus chapter 34. Just to look and review about things we already know, but it's always good to study. We're looking at the Ten Commandments. You know, the Bible calls them the Ten Commandments. When you read them, there's some ones that look like they could be more than one. But I was thinking about that. You know, I said, well, where's it? does it say Ten Commandments? It does. Exodus several times in the Bible, but just to start here, we'll look at Exodus chapter 34, verse 28. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your blessings this weekend, for our freedom. Thank you, Lord, that we're a country that for our founding fathers uh, foresaw the need for the rights of, uh, of the people to freely speak and freely worship you and freely to assemble. And Lord, this morning, we thank you for these freedoms that we can assemble without persecution Although there are those that would seek to dem our demise and to destroy the church, uh, we thank you that our protection is not the Constitution or the government, but it's the Holy Spirit and it's God Almighty. Lord, you said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against uh, the rock that we are built upon. We thank you, Lord, for the rock, our salvation, Jesus Christ. Bless now the, the, the Sunday school hour. Bless our hearts, Lord, with thy word. May we be in tune with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Exodus 34. And he was there with the Lord, that's Moses, 40 days. Now, the Ten Commandments is called a covenant. That's one of the things you're going to find in this verse. The Lord said, this is a covenant. So it's, the Ten Commandments are good, but this is primarily given to Israel. Primarily given to Israel. Something that uh, God has given them. Look at verse uh, 27. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. So this is a covenant. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. Neither did He did neither eat bread nor drink water. Wow. I mean, that's, that's a supernatural fast. <laughs> because he didn't even drink water for forty days. The Lord was his sustenance. It had to be. And, uh, and he wrote upon the table. See, that's why people don't believe the Bible. They, they'd say, well, that's scientifically. I follow the science. That's impossible. Nobody can live without water for 40 days. Moses did. I, I don't care what your science says. The Bible says Moses lived 40 days and 40 nights without drinking water. And God is able. Amen. With God, all things are possible. Amen. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And so uh, they are called the Ten Commandments. And so let's go back to Exodus chapter 20, just a few chapters, back to 14 chapters, where we're studying. And we studied, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the first one. You know, it's interesting, the second one is almost a continuation of the first one. Uh, they both deal with God's jealousy. The first one and the second one, that's, they take precedence. There's eight others, but these two are very closely related. God almost repeats the second one. He's saying, here's what I mean. <laughs> number two is, uh, hey, number one is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the second one is, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Just so I can be clear, I don't want anything to be made that is physical, that you can bow down and worship, whether it be you know, some artifact of Jesus. How many Catholics go on pilgrimages to visit some holy relic? And God hates that. But Catholics think it's fine. Go, God says, thou sh you shan't bow down. They go there and they kiss these statues. They kiss these things. They bow down and pray to Mary over them. They have, I'll probably, they have hair, the hair of Mary, the Virgin Mary in... Uh, Padua, I think it is. Padua, whatever. Padua. Oh, they're all the same in Italy. I don't know those names. But uh, then there's another place that has Mary's milk in vials. Yeah, over in like San Guardio in Rome. And uh, they, got, they actually have in another place in Italy, Mary's wedding ring. Imagine that. And they also have in another place in Italy, I forget the name of the town too. Just call it, you know, Assisi or something. And they have her girdle. So they got about just all her wardrobe, you know, over there in Italy somewhere. 
You know, they don't have her bones because she was assumed up into heaven. But if they could have her bones, they'd have her bones too. You know, it's like the one guy who went to one town and he found the skull of John the Baptist in one of those churches there. And he, people bowing down and praying. And he went to another town not far away and they had the skull of John the Baptist too. And he asked the guide, he goes, how can they both have the skull of John the Baptist? And he said, well, you'll notice that one in the other town was smaller and that was when John the Baptist was, was young. <laughs> we got two skulls <laughs> of John the Baptist here. <laughs> he, he grew too. Anyways, it's about the sum of it, right? It's all nonsense. But people will go on pilgrimages, holy pilgrimages, millions, 800 million more, a billion Catholics, I don't know how many there are, and they'll bow down to things, and, and they'll bow down to statues of Mary. To this day, who call themselves Christians, break the second commandment. You say, well, we, that's not going on today. It absolutely is going on today. There's, there's whole churches. This, you take the, the Mormons. They bow down to their 12 apostles. They, the Jehovah's false witnesses, they bow down to the whole religious system. You got to go to their church only, and you got to go under the, what is his name, uh, Moroni, Moroni. And uh, you got to go into their, their uh, Salt Lake City temple. You know, they got some of the most beautiful buildings in the world. They impress people with that. It's like the Catholic Church. People are impressed with buildings and making of things with their hands. And they think that's holy. They think that's a temple. And they think those are the priests. And they'll go in there and put their hand through a sheet and get married. And there's all kinds of symbology, of a Masonic symbology, uh, Egyptian sim symbology, and People uh, still make things to believe that those things that are visible have some semblance that God is there. No, he's not. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit today. Amen? And God uh, is not in this. He doesn't need gypsum and, and uh, stucco and steel and nails and boards. God's not interested in that. Um, but people go in these places of worship and they, they think it's a holy place. And they bow down in these places. And they... Uh, they, uh, they bow down to the Mass. They get on their knees and the priest comes by and they bow down. They think they're worshiping some, uh, it's an idol. And God he hates it. Look at verse uh, th uh, 3. Uh, thou shalt have no other gods before you. Now, the second commandment, verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. So you can make. I had a brother. He said, I don't have any pictures in my house. God said not to make any images. I said, brother, he's, that's talking about worship. And he refused to have any. You know, some of our brethren could be real extreme. Amen. He says, oh, that's a, that's a print. That's something man-made. God hates that. I was like, no, that, this is connected with worshiping something that's not God to put it up and vaunt it and exalt it. And uh, so he had, I liked it, he had only scripture verses all over his house. You know, there used to be a guy, Malcolm Dickman, you see our signs that we hold up on the streets. Uh, he also used to do little wood, they used to have like a, a light reddish brown frame on them and they had scripture verses and everybody was hanging them up in their houses. I like that, you know, hang up the word of God. And he did that. But he said, it's, it's a sin, brother, to have all these pictures. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, all right, brother. Whatever, you're not going to win that battle, that brother. But thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. This is what the, that's why it's not two commandments. You could almost think that three, uh, four and five are two separate commandments. Because he says, thou shalt not twice. And there's a few times he does that. Uh, you'll see that this is, a, this is a, a little bit of a pitfall. This is a little bit of a uh, loophole. Why? Because the Catholic Church is, is going to use this loophole. I'll show you why. And then you can take four and five and say, oh, well, that's two. No, it's not. It's, it's taking something you grave, making to gra engrave it. That's why the word's called graven. You shape it. You form it. Engraved. Uh, inscriptions, you know. And so, uh, graven image. Uh, engraved. Uh, I guess that's where you get the word grave. I never thought about it. But you go to the tombstone and there's a grave. And that's because it's been, a, it's been uh, you know, they take a chisel and they put the words on the stone. And God already put something on the stone. He said, 
I've been scripted in Ten Commandments. Don't make anything graven in, with your hands. And uh, a graven image, that means written upon, shapen, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, colon. So that's important. That colon says there's more to say about it. It's not just somebody doing sculpture. It's not somebody just drawing a picture. It's not somebody just in, inscribing something. Otherwise, you could even have grave tombstones because God said, don't make anything graven. Uh, no, he's saying, why? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Colon, again. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So God says, any other thing that is an idol, that means you hate me. There's no in-between. Jesus has said the same thing. He said, no man can serve two masters. For either will love the one and hate the other. So the Lord's saying here that if you love me, don't fall down to Nehushta. Or don't, make, don't fall down to the golden calf again. And while he was up on the mountain telling that to Moses during those 40 days and 40 nights, meanwhile, they're down there throwing their earrings in the... In the, in the, you know, in a, in a cauldron and making out, out came this calf. Aaron's like, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you ever read that? It's like, come on, man. You don't play. It's like your kids. I don't know how it happened. You know, uh, we just, you know, <laughs> they, it just happened. No, things, you made it. You engraved, you engraved it. And uh, showing mercy unto thousands and that love me and keep my commandments. So this was a commandment. So uh, three and four, uh, four and five, I mean, uh, look like they could be two, like thou shalt not make any grave image and thou shalt not bow down to them. Uh, what the Catholic Church did was they got rid of the bow down part <laughs> and they made, uh, you know, uh, no, they got rid of the grave and image part and they made number 10, nine and 10. Look at 17. And so you got two thou shalt nots in this one. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. And they'll make that the ninth commandment. And so you can get rid of thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So when you look at the Ten Commandments of the Catholic Church, they say thou, uh, thou, shalt, uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Why? Because they got all kinds of graven images. They got Mary, they got, you know... The popes, they got Peter, and they kiss his toe. I mean, I've been over in the Vatican, like I told you. Maybe I've said this story. I got off the boat in Naples one time, and I hear this, Howdy, brother! And there was Ray Sauter over across the pier. And I said, Hey, brother, Ray, good to see you. I said, What are you doing, man? He goes, I'm going up to see the pope. So I said, All right, take me with you. And he had a whole stack of tracks. I was a baby Christian. This is one of the greatest things I ever had. He took me up there to Rome, and we passed out tracks all over Rome. Uh, we gave him the nuns. We gave him to a bunch of kids coming out of one of these uh, one of these Catholic schools. And we go to the Vatican, and we're walking around in there giving out gospel tracks. And there were people lined up to kiss the toe of Peter. So much so they'll bite little pieces of that cement off, saying, so take a little relic home to put it in a bottle, you know, and stick it on there. I watched them. Them old ladies were lined up to go over and kiss the toe of Peter. And it was sad, you know. And so Ray, I ran out of tracks. I said, what are we going to do, Ray? Well, no, no more tracks. He goes, we're going to sing. <laughs> he said, I said, what? He said, we're going to sing. What can take, what can wash away my sins? I said, all right, brother. He's in that big old Texas draw. What can wash away my sins? He's singing in the Vatican, you know. It's a church. What's wrong with singing that, man? And we're singing the two of us walking through there, man, with those pillars of that Catholic. You ever see that Vatican? That's a scary place. They got the monstrances and the light coming through, the, these big sundials and stuff. It's a wicked place, most wicked place on earth, probably. You talk about wicked places, walk into the Vatican. That is a place of a cult of worshiping idols. They got statues up on top as you got a big old obelisk from Egypt itself, one of those from on. It's an ancient obelisk, and you got three lines going through that thing. You ever see those lines on when you're when you're scanning? Uh, they have a. You ever take your product? The old scanners used to go across the top of them, and they had three lines intersecting each other. And that was the old scanners. It's it's three lines. It has six points on it, 
that obelisk sits right through th three intersecting lines, I noticed, and it's like 666. If you walk into Vatican, there's a big old circle like a keyhole, and you walk up, there's a, there's a corridor right up there, and the first thing you come to is a big Egyptian obelisk. God hates that thing. It really is a picture of male, you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but it's the same thing. They, going back to Babylon, worshiping sexual orgies on top of that thing. You go to Ukraine, they got these, they build very big towers in their churches with a, with a what you call, like an onion dome. You ever see those? Gold on top. Real high. It all comes back to phalanx. It's called a phalanx. Back in the old days, they used a phalanx uh, in dictionaries to point out words that are wicked, believe it or not. The phalanx is like, even this is a phalanx of sorts. A lot of Masonic stuff, when you look at it, is in our society. So I know guys that won't wear ties. That's a phalanx, brother. None of you ever, it doesn't, my conscience is all right. I don't care. But that's a phalanx symbol. And that's why, why we wear, you know, wear stuff like that. You say, what? That stuff goes back in time. People develop this stuff at the Catholic Church. First thing you will see is a big old uh, symbol of reproduction. What do they do with the, in Orthodox tradition? They have a, a bread that's about this high. And it's real narrow. And it has a head on it. And they put white icing on top and sprinkles on top and put three eggs on the top of that thing. They hard boil eggs into the cake. It's called the baking cakes of the Queen of Heaven. You ever read that in your Bible? They baked cakes under the Queen of Heaven. There's so much uh, Greek and Roman mythology and wickedness and Catholicism and orthodoxy, you'd be, you wouldn't believe it. All their buildings are an offense to God. All that stuff is a vaunting. It's like the, we will build a tower into heaven. A tower. It's man's, we are God's. And, they, and they, all that stuff, and the ziggurat, if you study the history of the ziggurat down in Babylon, it's a big idol. It's a big sexual, that's where if you study your history, read Hislop's Two Babylons. Anybody ever read that? Hislop's Two Babylons. One of the greatest books ever written. That thing goes through all mankind's history and shows you every goddess that man has worshipped from Isis to the, uh, the Lorelei woman in Germany to the Ashtoreth. All that stuff is Mary worshipped from the beginning. The mother of uh, Semiramis was the mother of Cush. And she had relations with her son and progenerate. And that whole thing was the Catholic Church in its early beginnings. Secret priests who would open a door and listen to the confessions of the people. That stuff, you read that, Hislop, two Babylons. Catholic Church is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations on the earth. Idolatry. There's so much idolatry on the earth today, and people, God hates it. He says it in the second commandment, and no one thinks about that. Catholics, oh, I'm a Christian. We believe in Jesus Christ. No, you're an idolater, and God hates that. You don't know the true Jesus Christ. If you did, you wouldn't bow down to Mary and worship her. You wouldn't pray to her. Amen? You wouldn't go out to some phalanx over in Rome and go visit the Pope and kiss his ring and pay thousands of dollars just to have an interview with the Pope and see him. They pay that kind of money just to, just to see the Pope and kiss his ring. They bring their children to get blessed by the Pope. He li they line them up. He makes millions of dollars that way. Very wealthy Catholics will pay any amount of money to see the Pope. Anyways, we, we went through the Vatican. That was one of the greatest moments of my life. What can wash away my sins? Right there in the Vatican. You know the devil hated hearing that. He hates to hear the blood of Jesus, especially in that place. And it says in verse 17, what did they do? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. They made that number nine. And then they made, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. They made that number 10. Nor his manservant. They must have made that 11. Or his maidservant. They must have made that, no, they quit, you know. <laughs> Don't make sense, right? So they, they, they split the 10th commandment, make it 9 and 10, and that way they get rid of the guilty part of them making any graven image. Because that's what they've been doing for thousands of years, worshiping idols. And what they do is they go, the Catholic Church will go to a country, and they won't get rid of the people's gods. They put them in the Catholic Church so people feel comfortable. They come in there and they stick their boots incense in the entrance way. And you go to the, any country in the world, the Catholic Church is a chameleon. She mixes and she adapts with their religion so that she can get more people in. She doesn't say, forget your gods. Bring your gods in. The Catholic Church uses that. 
Why? Because they have false gods. And so this is, uh, the second is like the first. It's so important. And God is jealous. He has a commandment of not uh, having no other gods before me, nor making anything, uh, any image, any graven image of anything. Number two, and bowing down to them. And most of the Ten Commandments, though, you'll notice are thou shalt not. Uh, eight of them are thou shalt nots. And uh, God knows man, he knows that he wants to do things that are just evil. <laughs> and he said, don't do it. Eight out of ten are thou, and even nine out of ten, if you want to count, number uh, four, even though it says remember the Sabbath, part of that commandment is thou shalt not too. Look at verse um, Look at uh, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work. So the Lord does have a thou shalt not in the fourth commandment. The only one that doesn't have a thou shalt not is number five. It says uh, honor. It says honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So God knows that... <laughs> Uh, most of the time, we need to be told what not to do. Amen? <laughs> it's just nine out of ten. <laughs> don't do this and don't do that. And don't, you, you, if you're a parent, you, you, know, you don't have to, you know, the, the thing is you're usually telling them, don't go there, don't do this, don't touch that, don't, <laughs> don't say that. And so the Lord knows his children. He's like, thou shalt not do this and you know, thou shalt not do that. And after a while, you're like, Lord, you're so negative. I just don't, you know, it's the way kids are. They're like... It's always like, you're always, you're a bummer. You're a real drag, mom, you know. And we get on our moms, you know. You're so negative. I even get on Nina sometimes. Come on, lighten up, you know. I'm like a kid, too. Dads do that. Yeah, she's spiritual. She's like God, right? <laughs> yeah. Us men are like, we, we align, at least with the boys. Maybe it's, uh, I don't have girls, so I don't know how you, I don't know you parents with the dads and the moms. Maybe the dads align with the boys. I don't know. I'm always like, come on, cut them some slack, mom, you know. But uh, you don't like that? You have that? What's it like with the girls? Is it moms aligning with the girls? Nah, dads, it's even worse. It's even worse, right? <laughs> dad's always trying to, dad's like, dad's like one of the kids. <laughs> yeah, let, let's get dad to say yes. Uh, yeah, dad will say okay. Yeah, we tend to be that. I don't know why that is. Do you have that problem, Bob? Are you the, are you the strictarian? You're the strictarian. You're softer, huh? Mom's a little tougher. Okay, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. Moms have more sense. Amen? They're more like God. They are. God is right. We're, and uh, we like to break the rules, us guys. But no. It, the Lord's strict. He's nine times he says, thou shalt not. Don't do this. One time he says to do something, he says honor. Honor thy father and thy mother. So that's a do. But nine out of the, well, well I'd say eight. Eight, because the other one is remember the Sabbath day. So you're supposed to remember something. That's a positive. But in that, there's a thou shalt do no work. That's how you remember it. And I'll tell you another thing. Uh, honor thy parents also comes with some negatives. Like uh, back if, if you were to, if you were to um, curse your mother or father, you were to die the death. You were to be stoned to death. Yeah, if you cursed your parents... So thou shalt not curse thy mother and father too. This is about all ten of them are like, don't do something. Amen. And so the commandments are not really commanding you to do something. It's almost commanding you not to do something. If you think about it, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not uh, murder. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not uh, commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not, 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 not. And then one of them, honor. And even that one's like, thou shalt not curse them, thy mother and thy father. And he that curseth his mother and father shall die the death. And then God said to stone, stone him in the Old Testament. You couldn't talk back to your parents in the Old Testament. You had to honor them. And that even meant negative there. Because if you didn't honor them, it was bad news. Amen? So these are some severe warnings. The Ten Commandments are a covenant, but they're warnings. This is what you sh need to watch out for. These are the big ten. There's a lot of laws in the Old Testament, but these ones are the ones that we all have to struggle with daily. And um, this one's idolatry. And this one's committed today, not just in some place deep in Africa or India, 
but it's right here in the streets on Main Street in Idaho and Highway 2 and 93, amen, up and down these streets there's idolatry. We're in the homes, in the homes of America, television is a big idol, amen. Americans' money has become a big idol. They've made monuments to the things that men are doing. They, they glorify uh, everything that man's made with their hands today. Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and uh, Bezos and these folks. Their kids uh, glorify the sportsmen and the, and the rock musicians and the artists. They become gods. That's why you have this program called American Idol. It's idolatry. And they've vaunted them higher than God. These kids follow them and listen to every word that they say. And they obey them. And that's why you have, you ever see these, these hats, obey, and t-shirts that just say one word? They're black usually with a white word, obey. How many saw that? I see it all the time. And they have these flat-rimmed hats. And, and my tell said, I don't want you, he, has, he, has, he wore a chain when my mom, I think she ripped it right off. I'm like, Come to the kids are wearing chains, the boys. Well, I don't like chains. I said, well, I don't wear a chain. Why are you wearing a chain? Where are you picking that up? There, there's, there's, there's idolatry involved with that. It's like this is what the rappers are doing. They're wearing certain clothes and certain, they got a hoodie. You ever notice they want that? I said, I don't like, get the hoodie off. It's just natural that people want to gravitate to these idols. Amen. So you got to watch out for your kids and say, look, you know, we don't do that here. We don't, you don't force your kid, but you want to try to train them up. It's a battle, amen, to say, hey, I can't make you do this, but, you know, I want, I want my kids and you want your kids to follow you and, and worship the Lord, amen? So there's a struggle. And the children of Israel, the, their kids, you know, they didn't know the Lord, the Bible says, and they started going after idols. What did God do in Egypt? He destroyed all those idols of Egypt. They worshiped the sun. He darkened it. They worshiped the calf. Uh, they were smitten with, with the blame. Uh, they worshipped the flies till they hated them. They were everywhere. They worshipped the the frogs. And they were hopping in their stove in their bed at night. There were so many. They despised it. They worshipped the river Nile, and so God turned it to blood. And they couldn't drink from it. And they couldn't get life from it. So everything they worshipped in Egypt, and that's the world. Egypt is a picture of the world. God will smite it, and and uh, you might put your hope in something. And you know, if you are a Christian. You're starting to get around the world and you start loving the things of the world. God will smite that thing sometimes and take it out of your life. He'll, he destroyed it. He said to the Israelites, don't worship their gods. You live in the land of Goshen. And they started probably looking to the Egyptians. They were wealthy. And, they, you know, and the Jews, were, they were happy to be servants to the world. Happy to be servants to the pharaohs. And God says, look what you've become. You've become servants to these people that worship idols. And Christians today... We can become servants to those people in the world and uh, forget that our God is over all. Amen? And he can smite America. If Christians in America start to envy the wicked like Asaph did, he said, I envied the wicked. You hear that draining? I hope you're not bothered by that. Um, the baptistry's draining. So he said, what's that noise? Now that I mentioned it, you won't be able to get out of your head. But uh, let's go on. So Americans can become uh, servants to these idols, to those people in the world. What is one of the biggest idols today? I'll be preaching on it today. Uh, Colossians chapter 3. It's not just committed down in you know, some island of the Polynesian islands where they build little tiki, you know, little, uh, what do you call them, totem poles. Or the East, what do you call the Easter Islands, where they had these big rocks. I don't know. Those things are fascinating, though, aren't they? It's like, well, what did they, how do they do that, you know? Or these places down there where they drew these big images. You can only see them from, like, space. And they're these drawings. I don't know where those are, in Peru or some place in South America. Uh, there, there's angelic activity. Because when you're worshiping anything but God, the devil gets in that thing. Colossians chapter 3. The devil likes false worship. He's, he's called an angel of light for a reason. 
He likes people to worship him. He likes when men can worship anything but God, it, it serves the devil. That's what it comes down to. When you serve anything but the Lord and you worship anything but the Lord, the devil gets the praise. He, he likes that. He wants to entangle your life up with things. And one of the things that can do that is covetousness. Verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence. That word, you say, well, that's a big word, concupiscence. Well, boil it down to uh, Cupid. Okay? What does he do? He sh shoots somebody in the heart. It's, it's lust. Okay? He gets lust in there. <laughs> and cupid, cupid. And that's where that root word is, concupid. Cupid, Cupid's in there. Watch out for something that strikes your heart with lust for a woman or a man. And covetousness, which is idolatry. And now the word which is, is a singular, so I thought, well, maybe that, sometimes they were reading the King James Bible, it might include all those things. And I was thinking about it and praying and studying. And no, it's just covetousness in this particular verse. Not all those things are idolatry. How do I know that? Go back to Ephesians chapter 5. And um, hold that thought. Where do I have? I think it's verse f 5. Yeah, 5 5. So here he says the same thing, kind of. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater. A covetous man is an idolater. That's the biggest problem in America. <laughs> when you really think about it, I mean covetousness. Americans want more stuff. And they, they see stuff on commercial advertising today and um, never satisfied. Not, there's a discontentment with people. They see what their neighbor has. They see all the gadgets out there. And you see that in your kids. Maybe we get like them. But my son, he's like, I want jet skiing. I want to get a jet ski. I said, you know how much one of those things costs? I thought you were saving for a car. You know? <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, yeah, but... Uh, when he's looking online, how much they cost. It's like, okay, let's say you get a jet ski. Where are you going to keep it? Oh, and in the, in the, you're not keeping it in my house. I don't want it in my garage. <laughs> well, how are you going to haul it around? Well, you've got to get a trailer next. It's like, once you get one thing, you've got to get the other thing. Then you've got to get the other thing. And they kind of hook, get you hooked that way with this world, right? They get you to buy the, the, you know, the system, and then you've got to get this cartridge for it, and you've got to get... The, that that goes with it, and then you got to get the headset and then whatever the video game Xbox never had one, but you know then they got to get the, the all these things that go with it and sell this and sell that and get you hooked in. You got to get the house and then the garage and then the dog and then the dog house and then the boat and then the trailer and then the jet ski and then the skis and then the it's like life is like that. It gets you so caught up with I got to get everything, and you're not content. Contentment comes when you don't have that covetous spirit and that idolatry. You're just content with what you have. And people aren't content with just what a, a small morsel and a, a dinner of herbs. You ever read that in Proverbs? I know Bob reads Proverbs a lot. And it says, it talks about a dinner of herbs is better than a house full of sacrifice. And contentment therewith, right? Is better than a house full of sacrifices with strife. And you got American houses, or you can see their strife. Why? The divorce rate. They thought, oh, if we get all this stuff, we'll just be happy. You know, it's covetousness. Having all that stuff don't make you happy. Having contentment with just, I, I, don't, I have a lot of stuff. I'm not saying wrong to have stuff. Some of you guys got a lot of stuff, amen. But are you content without the stuff? Sometimes you're more content without the stuff, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I think back when just sometimes Dina and I, so little that we had, it was great. We put it all in one little uh, station wagon. Everything we had in life. And I don't know how you accumulate stuff after a while. You need containers to move it here and there and U-Haul trucks. and It's just amazing how it's, it's like accumulation, right? You say, where did all this stuff come from? And you got to have a garage sale, right? And then you make a bunch of money and you go out and buy a bunch of stuff and fill it fill it up again. <laughs> Preachers like that. He's like, hey, get me some mad money. He has like a garage show every year. 
And then he goes out and buys more stuff. And <laughs> he's, I'm always helping him clean his garage, man. He, he, he just collects stuff, too, not just stuff he buys. He's got piles of wood and piles of, you know, it's so fun. If you need anything, he's got it, but you just got to find it. You know, if you could find it in there, you know, his garage is it's a maze. But anyways, uh, that's the problem with America is that we're so full. And it says here in Colossians 3, 5, covetousness, which is idolatry. That's the it's always been the problem. Back in the ancient times, God knew why they would make graven images. It was if they would pray to them, they thought that they would answer their prayers and give them what they wanted, whether it was rain in their harvest time. And so they would, uh, these shamans and these people who, witch doctors, would convince them that without praying to this god, Marduk, or, you know, uh, Remphant or whatever, they wouldn't get blessed. And so they said, you got to bow down and pray to this idol or whatever it was. And people do that all around the world. They pray to their false gods to bless them with material wealth. I believe that these people that have really rich people out there, I believe that they've basically, they've got to sell their soul to the devil at some point. They had to pray to the devil, these rock stars or these, these ultra-rich people. There's a satanic cult in this world, folks. Amen? They said, well, that sounds like, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I believe that the devil is the prince of the power of the air, the god of this world. And the love not, the Bible says, uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. <laughs> so when you talk about those people like the Queen of England, everything, she's a sweet old dear lady. I think she's one of the top queens of satanic cult in the world. So, oh, how dare you speak about the mother queen? Uh, yeah. That woman there has more wealth than anybody in the world, and they're controlling people all around the world. There's a perversion that permeates all around those people. The Clintons and her son, the prince, and all these people, they're doing all kinds of wicked stuff in this world. They're the ones that are promoting and selling Satanism wholesale to the whole world. They're the ones that are idolaters. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Um, you know, one of the another way that people worship uh, idols, look over in 2 Corinthians 11, preaching a false gospel, another Jesus. If you don't have the true Jesus, you have, a, you have a false God. And so Paul's warning about that in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 11. And God's jealous, so Paul's jealous, verse 2. See, he's jealous for a reason. And uh, it's connected with jealousy because Satan got, in the beginning, he, they didn't love the Lord that God with all their heart because they ate the, the, from the tree and there was, ye shall be as gods. So there's some false worship going on right from the garden. And the idea that man says, I don't need to worship God, I'll worship myself. I'll worship man. Evolution is, is, a, is an idol. They're teaching it whole, wholesale to the kids in school. We're God. There is no God. It all started with a big bang, and man is the pinnacle. We determine our destiny. We're, this is heaven on earth. I'm not looking for some, some thing in heaven, in the third heaven. I'm, this, is, this is all we got. You know, and they're teaching kids that, and so that's why there's no hope, and there's kids committing suicide. And, you know, they don't, they've, fall, they've bought into the false god. The devil said, yea, hath God said. And then he starts lying there and says, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And so Paul says, I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. For I fear, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So he connects the church and her departure from the truth of God's word after any false gospel. He's warning the early church, do not believe these false preachers. They're like Satan. They're trying to get you to bow down to their system of religion. Bow down to another God instead of the true God. And say, who's that? Look down in verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's a God. That's a false God. He's, he transforms himself. Oh, believe me, I'm the truth. I'm Jesus. And he said, that's another Jesus. Look at verse Go back now to verse 3. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Verse 4. 
For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, it's an idol, it's another Jesus. And so God says, I'm jealous over you. You know what's going on? False doctrine in so many churches. Another Jesus. There's so many false Jesuses today. They, they don't present him the Trinity. The Word of God was made flesh. I believe in a Trinity. I believe that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are one. These three are one. And so there's churches, Unitarian up on Trumbull Creek. There's Unitarians that deny the Father and the Son. That's an idol. Amen. So false religion is an idol today. They cause people to bow down to a false God. It's another gospel. And if you don't know who Jesus Christ truly is, he's one with the Father. He's God in the flesh. And so what happens is all these versions are attacking the deity of Christ. It's just amazing. And people, Christians may believe in their heart or head. I don't even know who Jesus is, but their Bible's attacking him. It's changing who he is. There says things like Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, somewhere in there. It says, ours says, uh, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Wow, amen. Jesus was not robbing the Father of anything when he said, I'm equal with the Father. It was not robbery. You know what the other versions say? Who, being in very nature like God, thought equality with God a thing not to be grasped. Thought equality with God a thing not to be grasped? Whoa. They said Jesus never, never entered his mind to try to be like the Father, to be like God. That's a lie. Look it up, any version out there, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Bible says that he lowered himself, though, and became like a servant. He was God, but he became a man. He, the death of the cross, wherefore God hath highly exalted him. He exalted his son because he lowered himself from being up there in the throne of God. Uh, there's so many verses. 1 John 5, 7, completely out of all the versions. 1 Timothy 3, 16, God was manifest in the flesh, changed in all the new versions. So many things. The blood of Christ is taken out. The deity of Christ. Why? They have a false God. They present a false Jesus. That's what Paul's warning about. Where does it happen? By changing the preaching, by changing the word of God. Paul warned about that, that there will come an false apostles and another Jesus. And he says, and another Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might bear well with him. I mean, you put up with that, but you don't put up with me. <laughs> they got mad at Paul. He said, but you're putting up with these liars. Beware, Christian. Don't, don't entertain heresy. Don't be friends with people that are preaching a false gospel. Reprove them. And say, that's idolatry. I serve a living Savior. He's God in the flesh. Don't be ashamed to believe the truth of God's Word. Amen. And there's other false gods out there. There's false Jesuses. And so uh, a false gospel. One preacher was preaching on hell, and some woman interrupted and said, my God would never put anybody in hell. And he says, you're right. Your God never would, because your God is the imaginations of your mind. Because God is holy, and God's word is true, and God will not allow a sinner into heaven if he won't repent. And God, the Bible God, the true God, sends people to hell. And your God would never do that. That's right. Because your God you made in your image. That's why people don't like the God of the Bible. Amen? He said, well, I don't like that God of the Bible who sent the Jews to kill all those babies and women over there in the Bible. How could God do such a thing? I don't like that God. So I don't want to believe in that God. Amen, that's what they do. And you got liberal preachers today that uh, deny the Word of God, and they criticize the Bible and say those were allegories, it wasn't true, and this isn't true, and don't believe in a real literal hell. They're, God, a loving God would never send anybody to hell. You know, Norman Vincent Peale type people. There's a bunch of them out there today, modernists that deny the Word of God and make people feel good about uh, God by saying he's just a big teddy bear in heaven. He loves everybody. You know, and that's what they're doing. They've, they've made idols. They've made false idols. Their doctrine is presenting a false Jesus, an idol that is not the Jesus of the Bible. So covetousness is an idol today. 
a false gospel today is permeating in our nation and the world is an idol. And um, this God, uh, that's pleasing to man. That's what Satan said. Ye shall be as gods. And um, where are we at? Let's go to, uh, what are some more gods of today? Deuteronomy 23.6. Deuteronomy 23.6. You should underline this. Deuteronomy 23, put a note beside it in your Bible. Two gods that people worship in America. It says, um, verse 5, nevertheless, nevertheless the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam. Remember what Balaam did? He said, how can I get them to curse God? How can I turn the hearts of Israel away from God? He taught them how to fornicate with the Moabites and join with them and worship their gods. And their gods were some things here. Look here. And he says, But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Verse 6, Thou shalt not seek their peace, nor their prosperity all the, thy days forever. Their peace and prosperity, those are like two gods. <laughs> if you want the world's peace and not the peace of God, that's a, God, that's a false god. The world has a false peace out there, and it isn't the peace of God. Security from the government, world peace. No, man, that's just building up the Antichrist and his coming. Prosperity from the world. At what sacrifice? What sacrifice will you have to lay on the altar to get their prosperity and their peace? Amen. A lot of Christians have sacrificed church, service to God, fellowship with Christians, so they can make more money. To pursue a career, to pursue a person who's not even saved, marry a lost person. They want, they want to find peace. They want to find prosperity in the world. Christians don't sacrifice it. Don't go after their gods. Don't go after their false promises. Um, and their money. You know, they make gods out of these people. Elon Musk. Boy, the kids are Tesla. I think that's an ugly looking car. I mean, and my kids were like, look at this, a Tesla. I'd never heard of it before, about a year or two ago. I was like, so what? Oh, that's, I said, that's an ugly looking car. Man, you ever see a Mustang? You ever see a Malibu? Your kids never saw a Corvette, 1963? My goodness, man, you're talking about this Tesla come out? That thing looks like an old VW or something, man. So I have got no doorknobs or whatever, man. I'm going to build something that ugly. It's 2022. Don't you got no imagination? But Elon Musk, he, even the Kev service, he's great. He's the best. Man, don't trust those people. Their prosperity. Watch out for that. Amen. They're setting you up. Bill Gates, all these people, they're bringing the world to a one world genocide. They're going to control what people eat. They're going to control what people think. They're going to put plant implants in people's brains and all kinds of things. They've got a whole design for humanity. Where's Elon in the Bible? That's one of those names you don't want to name your kid, by the way. Amen. It's like Judas. It's like Samson, you know, you like Samson? Go ahead. But Delilah or Jezebel. You know, they're naming their kids these names nowadays, you know, Jezebel, whatever. You know, Bathsheba. Look over and uh, I'll give you a, a verse on Elon Musk. Where are we at? I don't have it. All right, Genesis 26, 34. Genesis 26, 34. You ever study the... Uh, law of first mention in the Bible. All right, well, look at Genesis 26, 34. God already had his number a long time ago. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. First mention, Elon was a Hittite. Don't watch out for them, amen? <laughs> Just like give you a verse. Elon Musk, you know, where does that name come from in the Bible? Hittites. They hated God. They serve idols. They serve false gods. He serves a false god. He can get saved. I'm not saying he can't. But those people that have all that money, I don't trust them. They're building a one world system. Very rarely do you see somebody with that kind of money that really uh, does something good with it. And they replace it. This, uh, we'll close here today. It's quarter till. I had some other notes, but there's a worldwide idolatry going on right now. It's a worldwide social connection. Worship money. Love of money. 
covetousness, which is idolatry. Don't be covetous, Christian. Beware of those that serve a false god. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the second commandment. The, you said, Thou shalt not make any graven image unto thee of anything in heaven or on earth or under the earth, and thou shalt not bow down to them or worship them. Uh, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God. And Lord, we as Christians this morning want to thank you for saving our souls and thank you for being our God, our true God, the only true God. Beside thee, there is no God. And we thank you, Lord, that we can worship you with a pure heart this morning and worship your Son. We thank you, Father, for the Word of God. We pray you bless this study. Pray that we watch our hearts. Pray you bless the service to come, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.